Hey, this is Sketchy. We're a learning company and this podcast is a review of the material meant to be used in tandem with our videos, quizzes, and symbol explorer to help the lessons stick. Or use this to passively review a topic while you're on the go. Check out the link in the episode bio to watch the video that goes with this podcast. All right, let's get started. As you probably know by now, here at Sketchy, we take our puns very seriously. <clears throat> but couldn't resist starting this sketch without a cheesy dad joke. So, where do vampires deposit their hard-earned money? The blood bank, of course. <laughs> I mean, come on, if you don't chuckle at that. There's the door. It's right, it's right there. Go on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, the blood bank. That mysterious place where blood is somehow stored and magically makes its way to your patient when transfusion is ordered. But in order to make sure your patients get the blood products they need without killing them, it's important to understand what's really happening down there. To start, let's look at pre-transfusion testing. A patient's blood type is needed before giving most blood products. And by type, we mean those A's, B's, O's, and RHD positivity or negativity. This is to make sure that transfused products are compatible with the recipient's circulating antibodies. Blood type, or simply a type, is by far the fastest pre-transfusion test, taking just under a half hour. So, this typing speed demon should remind you that. Sorry, Steven, you're right. You're a vampire, not a demon. My apologies. So sensitive. But type isn't all that useful. More testing is needed. The type and screen, both types and uh, screens, the patient's plasma for antibodies to any of the hundreds of other antigens on red blood cells. You didn't think ABO and RH were the only ones, right? Based on the results, the patient's profile is matched up with appropriate blood products they could receive. As a reminder, take a close look at this security x-ray screen detecting our vampire's suspiciously antibody-shaped cloak. And only the cloak. Well, turns out that the whole vampire and mirror thing works for x-rays too. And I gotta say, that's one heck of a pop collar. Finally, the type and cross involves typing, screening, and then mixing the patient's blood with specific units of banked blood. This is called cross-matching, or cross for short, hence our security guard's big ol' cross. Because who makes the best vampire bouncer? A priest, of course, complete with holy water and garlic breath. Did you get the garlic bagel again? Ugh. A type and cross reserves the matching unit for that patient, so don't order one for everyone, or there won't be any blood left in the hospital. Now, let's talk about the products available. And I don't mean securities, bonds, or Bitcoin, or Bitcoin. Blood is separated or fractionated into its components, either after whole blood is donated, like this coin sorter is doing, or during donation using a special process called apheresis. In apheresis, only one specific component is donated, and the rest goes back into the donor, particularly useful for platelets. The major component in blood is packed red blood cells. Packed, because they're all packed together, like sardines, without any plasma, and just a little bit of citrate-based preservative. A hemoglobin of seven is the magic number here, at which point pretty much everyone needs a transfusion. However, also consider the patient's clinical status. Acute blood loss and hemorrhagic shock are obvious indications and higher hemoglobin thresholds of eight to nine are used for patients with significant cardiovascular disease, those who can't tolerate anemia, like elderly patients, or anemic patients with symptoms, hypoxia, or about to undergo surgery. Oh, and also vampires. With low account balances. Ah, 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 ah. One unit of blood raises hemoglobin by approximately one point, or grams per deciliter. How many units are needed depends on the indication, with goals to restore hemoglobin to above transfusion levels and or improve symptoms. Now, have a look over at these silver coins. Is, is, that, is that Nosferatu's face on them? These big old plate-sized coins symbolize platelets, another fractionated component. And they're silver, since plata means silver in Spanish. Don't tell the werewolf janitors. 
Apheresis platelets are far more common than whole blood derived platelets and contain at minimum six times as many platelets per unit. You may hear this referred to as a six pack colloquially. Avoid getting that confused with the six pack you get at the bodega. We do not condone that kind of transfusion. This banker in charge of silver deposits is scrutinizing each platelet coin for every last carat of silver. Kidding. Actually, the less than 10K is a reminder that an absolute platelet count of less than 10,000 is an indication for transfusion to prevent spontaneous hemorrhage in most circumstances. Platelet transfusion is also indicated when patients have a platelet count of less than 50,000 and concurrent active bleeding or those undergoing invasive procedures or childbirth. So just look at this leaking blood forming a less than 50K symbol. Vlad, Vlad, seriously, everyone knows you put your lunch in a plastic bag, not a paper bag. The last component separated from whole blood is plasma. Once separated, it's frozen to prevent breakdown of coagulation factors. Hence the name fresh frozen plasma or FFP. And just look at the frigid scene outside. This fighter jet's our recurring symbol for FFP. He always wanted to be a fighter pilot, but the Air Force has strict requirements. Something about being under 30 years old, and Laszlo here was born in the 18th century. Sorry, old chap. Since FFP contains all of the coagulation factors and associated goodies, it's used to treat significant coagulopathies from deficiencies in multiple clotting factors, like in DIC or cirrhosis. An INR of 2.0 is used as the threshold here, which is why this jet cruises at greater than Mach 2.0. Okay, someone was paying attention. Now that's how you pack a lunch. Don't want it leaking out like Vlad's. FFP can be further separated. Cryoprecipitate, or cryo for short, like this cryo brand cooler, is not just concentrated FFP, as it contains mostly fibrinogen, fibronectin, von Willebrand's factor, and factors eight and nine. Again, let this frosty frozen scene remind you of cryo. <laughs> It's generally used for clotting deficiencies in which fibrinogen is causing the problem, meaning fibrinogen levels of less than 100 to 150, depending on patient factors. See these French fries and onion rings forming less than 100? Took all that trouble to pack a cold lunch, and then you just went out and bought fast food. Huh. Pro-concentration, eh? Best for the night shift. The busiest time for vampires. PCC, or prothrombin complex concentrate, is a concentrate of factors used to treat emergent bleeding caused by vitamin K-dependent factor deficiencies, specifically from warfarin use. So, see how the bottle is shaped like a missile? To remind you of warfarin. All right, before we finish our banking business and cash out, let's talk about an important setting for blood transfusion, the Massive Transfusion Protocol. Massive Transfusion Protocol, or MTP, is activated when patients need massive amounts of blood. Hospitals all have a different definition of massive, but it's commonly defined as needing more than 10 units of blood within 24 hours. It can also be activated when a patient's coming in with known or a high likelihood of severe active bleeding, such as with major traumas. The MTP ensures blood products are available when needed and in the right ratios. And when your patient's bleeding, whole blood is lost. But if only PRBCs are given back, the patient's blood becomes dilute of coagulation factors and platelets, causing dilutional coagulopathies, which worsens the bleeding. To avoid this, MTP attempts to replicate whole blood by targeting a ratio of one unit of packed red blood cells to one of plasma and one of platelets, called a one-to-one-to-one -one -one ratio. Just like our money transfer pros ensure a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one service, giving your money the attention it deserves. Other MTP steps include monitoring blood and coagulation labs and maintaining calcium levels, as the citrate preservative in PRBCs binds up circulating calcium, worsening coagulopathies. MTP also brings us full circle to the first thing we talked about in this sketch, pre-transfusion testing. As we said, typing is the fastest, but it can still take up to a half hour. And that's time some patients may not have. For emergent blood transfusion, when blood type is unknown, O negative blood is the go-to since it's the end all be all universal donor. For plasma, AB positive is the universal donor as it contains no antibodies to A or B 
or RHD antigens. All right, with all these positives and negatives, let's sum all this up. Pre-transfusion testing includes the type, screen, and cross to ensure only compatible blood products are transfused. Blood products that can be transfused include packed red blood cells, typically at a hemoglobin of less than seven, during active hemorrhage, or depending on the patient's clinical status, platelets at an absolute level of less than 10,000 or less than 50,000 when actively bleeding, and FFP at an INR of greater than 2.0. FFP can be further separated into cryoprecipitate given for fibrinogen less than 100 to 150, and PCC, or prothrombin complex concentrate, given in emergent settings to reverse vitamin K-dependent clotting factor deficiencies, such as from warfarin use. Finally, Massive transfusion protocol, or MTP, is activated for high blood transfusion requirements for a patient and aims to replace blood with a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. That completes our sketch on the fascinating financial world of vampires. A solid investment for sure. And with all your studying, just remember, be positive. <laughs> all right, I'm done with the dad jokes today. Check out our other topics on YouTube or go to sketchy.com for our full suite of MCAT and med school lessons. Thanks for listening and stay sketchy out there.